Hello everyone, Professor Philip Travis in World History Part 2. It's our final week, and this week we have our third test. Our third test um, is not cumulative, and because we had our major essay last week, our, our writing assignment, there will be no essay portion on this test. This test will be all multiple choice, true, false. There could be a fill in the blank on there, but generally speaking, it'll be all multiple choice, true, false, no essays on this test. Um, this week, we're going to be reading chapter 30 and 31 from our textbook, and we're going to be looking at the Second World War, and we'll be looking at the Cold War, so we'll be covering the period from 1939 uh, to 1991. The, uh, the factoid, I'll just get right to this, um, and I'm going to talk a little about some history here, and then your factoid is going to be in the video just below. Just summarize the video just below. I think you'll find it very interesting. It relates to World War II. Um, and um, in sort of the memory of World War II in Germany um, um, in the, the century beyond uh, after World War II ended. The map you're looking at is uh, a map that really provides a visual depiction of the Cold War. Um, everything in sort of dark red or lighter, or lighter pink is associated with the Soviet Union, the communist bloc, and everything in blue and lighter blue would be associated with the United States and uh, in, in its Western uh, NATO bloc, a Warsaw Pact for the Communists and NATO for the capitalists of the United States and its allies. World War II is a unique period in history. And the reason it's a unique period in history, and it is more than just um, controversy between two countries, it's more than just, uh, you know, we know the, the term Cold War refers to um, a, a sort of non-shooting war, a, a war in which there are diplomatic and trade standoffs, but um, it's a non-shooting war. And while that might be true, at least between the two major powers, though the United States and the Soviet Union fought wars, of course, across the developing world during the Cold War. So there was quite a lot of shooting in parts of the, of the world, particularly the, the parts of the world that were now gaining independence because the Second World War resulted in an end of all of the old world empires. The British Empire and the French Empire, they were really decimated. And in its wake left really only two major sort of world powers, the United States and the Soviet Union. And so what made the Cold War unique was that the world for this period of time from 1945 to 1991, the world was a bipolar world. It was divided into two global camps, two global spheres of influence. And those two global spheres of influence did not, one communist and Soviet influenced, one American and sort of capitalist influenced. And those two powers did not participate actively in, the, in a singular world system. Uh, they did not involve themselves in normal diplomatic relations. They did not involve themselves in economic relationships, despite tense situations, right? They were separated, separate off from one another. And they were not, in a meaningful sense, involved in or participating in the world of the other. So you had a bipolar world where you had these two major powers that were operating under very different ideologies when it came to society and economics, right? These two powers competed across the developing world for influence of uh, the regions of the world that were formerly the colonies of countries like Britain or France and so on. And of course, this resulted in some very, very destructive conflicts uh, like the American Vietnam War following the French Indochina War in, in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. So, World War II, uh, the Cold War is really unique because in the aftermath of the destruction of World War II, uh, the old powers were destroyed and you saw the world sort of witness the emergence of two major hegemons that effectively competed for the developing world and divided the rest of the world off into sort of bipolar spheres of influence. And that's really what makes it a unique period of time. Uh, today in the 21st century, the United States might have some tense relations with China but China and the United States have very normal economic relations, right? There's all kinds of trade associations and economic and business and diplomatic relations between the two, despite the fact that there might be some tense diplomatic um, um, arrangements and economic arrangements. Um, 
It's not the same as the Cold War. Here's, here's the factoid for this week. The two big factors that really led to the Cold War occur were, were really, there's two of them. And one is sort of more on the decision that the United States would make, and the other is more on the decisions that the Soviet Union would make. So first of all, the first one is the United States. At the end of World War II, the United States was the only country to have the atomic bomb. It had an atomic monopoly. And there was pressure on the Truman administration to sort of give that technology up to the newly formed United Nations. The United Nations was formed in October of 1925. And so uh, there was pressure to sort of give that technology to the United Nations so no country could have that technology. Of course, that's a very difficult decision for Harry Truman to make. And obviously we know the United States is within, its, within Harry Truman's administration uh, makes a decision to keep the atomic bomb and to begin testing and further developing it. Well, the maintenance of the United States atomic monopoly led directly to the Soviet Union developing its own atomic weapon, which it would then detonate in 1949, and so began the atomic and then nuclear arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union. And the result of that nuclear arms race today, one of the big problems remains maybe the most significant concern in foreign policy and in international relations today is the issue of nuclear proliferation. Uh, the increasing expansion of nuclear technology, weapons technology to other countries, right? Today there are nine countries that possess uh, those weapons and uh, that is a legacy of the Cold War. And it's particularly concerning when it's countries that are in potential hostile areas, India, Pakistan. Israel has nuclear weapons. Uh, Iran might be trying to get a nuclear weapon. North Korea and South Korea, right? Of course, China um, and Taiwan. Taiwan, of course, does not have those weapons, but they are, of course, aligned um, loosely with the United States. That, of course, is the, the world's preeminent nuclear power. So one cause of the Cold War was the atomic monopoly and the issue of nuclear weapons. And that's one of the causes of the Cold War. Another the cause of the Cold War is basically what you see over here in this region, in these pink regions. And this was the Soviet occupation of Eastern Europe. During World War II, the United States emerged beginning its Lend-Lease program in March of 1941. And it emerges before Pearl Harbor with the Lend-Lease program and a goal of helping the Allies defeat um, the totalitarian imperial state of Nazi Germany, which of course was perpetrating the Holocaust and, and reaping destruction across Europe. Well, when the United States made that decision, this ultimately led to the United States championing something that Franklin Roosevelt called the Atlantic Charter. And the Atlantic Charter was really the reason the United States fought in World War II. It was fighting in World War II to basically allow peoples to have self-determination, to have people should have the right to determine their own government. They're fighting for human rights, the rights of people to be free from outside oppressive, tyrannical powers. And so the United States was fighting against occupation. It was fighting for people's rights to determine their own governments. Well, at the end of World War II, the Soviet Union occupied a myriad of countries on the air, in the areas of Eastern and Central Europe, Poland. East Germany, and this little dot is the divided city of Berlin, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, right? Bulgaria. And so this occupation of these Eastern European countries, and particularly East Germany, Hungary, Poland, Czechoslovakia, the occupation of these Eastern European and Central European countries effectively was a violation of the very premise of the Atlantic Charter that the Americans were fighting for. And from the American side of things, it resulted in the United States basically adopting a policy known as the containment policy, in which it asserted communist, the communist Soviet Union will expand. It's already expanded into the areas uh, that it defeated during World War II, and it'll probably try to expand if it's given the opportunity. And so the United States created the containment policy. And so these were the two big factors um, at the roots of the emergence of the Cold War. The atomic weapons monopoly 
and the Soviet occupation of Central and Eastern Europe. That's the fact for this week. I'll give you a couple bon extra bonus points on that because it's a bit long. Just summarize kind of what I just explained there. And uh, no discussion form this week. Uh, the test this week. Uh, be sure to take the test by the end of the week. And um, um, it, it'll be multiple choice, true, false only this week since we had our essay last week. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope everyone's really enjoyed this course. I hope you've learned a lot in this class. And I look forward, hopefully, hopefully to seeing you in another course of mine in the future. Uh, so let's have a great week.